Welcome, book nerds, to the Marriage Stories Podcast. I'm Bradley. And I'm Becca. And if you're here looking for marriage advice, all we got is couples that read together, breed together. Welcome to the Marriage Stories Podcast. I'm Bradley. And I'm Becca. And this is a surprise episode for my wife. I have no idea what to expect. <laughs> this topic is one that I've, I've been kind of wanting to do something like this for a bit. Where, I mean, you can tell on our logo. It has books, but it also has a movie projector. So I also do want to talk about adaptations of books. Whether that's TV or movie. And we recently watched a movie that is a very loose adaptation of a book or a series of books. Do you remember what movie this could be? No. All right. I will fill you in, audience. We have a weekly movie night. And it was my pick this mm, last week. That's a book? It's based off of the Graphic books. No. We are discussing... No. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, no. Batman and Robin. The best bad Batman movie. It was terrible. It was so great. So I... Not excited anymore. Oh. <laughs> I very much enjoy bad movies because they're fun to make fun of and poke fun at, especially with a big group of friends, which is what our movie night is. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy doing that as well. I just... This one was particularly terrible. Also good. So I think how we'll proceed with this is we are not worried about any spoilers. Let's just go from beginning to end as we remember the movie and our thoughts on it. Well, let me just say the earliest part I remember, I think, is the ice skating fight scene. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Freeze's Hockey Warriors. Okay, and it's literally set up, like, the set looks like you just went to the ice sculpture museum and set this really campy-looking villain, Arnold Schwarzenegger, as the Iceman. Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze. And a random minor league hockey team. And... <laughs> Oh, it's great. And Batman and Robin get knocked over and they have to click their heels together and skates pop out of their costumes. Like, also, every single possible pun around the word freeze or being cold or you ice all need to chill out. is used. It's painful. Have a nice day. It's painful. It's so good. Yes, so Arnold Schwarzenegger is Mr. Free's first miscast of this movie. What were they thinking? When you have Bane in a movie and you're casting Arnold Schwarzenegger for a role, why on earth don't you pick Bane? Also, he was kind of a random character. Like, Oh yes, he's the second worst Bane in Batman movies. Like, Bane did nothing. Oh yes, they ruined his character. It's ridiculous. He is a blubbering henchman for Poison Ivy. He just Ivy. went like this. Yeah. That's, like, I'm pretty sure that's all he ever did. I don't think he had any lines. Yes. He, no, he said Bane a couple times. Mm. <laughs> well, should we talk about the other villain of this movie being Uma Thurman's Poison Ivy? Which, I mean, for what it is... She slays, but... I mean, Uma Thurman always slays, and you can tell she's having so much fun because oh, she does just like, not care. I know this is terrible, and I'm going to be excellent at it. She so. does a striptease in a fluffy purple gorilla outfit. Oh. Also, her hair, makeup, and outfit have to change somewhat in every single shot. It's very distracting. Yes. yes. Like, sometimes, like, one of our friends pointed out, like, where'd her eyebrows go? She had these, like, big dramatic golden eyebrow pieces in one shot, and then literally, like, the next shot, 
she's in the same position. It's obviously just a different take. And the eyebrows are gone. <laughs> like a continuity error almost. Yes. And uh, um, so the whole thing with her turning into Poison Ivy happens because she's like supposed to be some nerdy lab girl for this evil professor that's making the Bane character out of this venom or something. Mm -hmm. Which is the first area it goes wrong because venom is not poison. Well, okay. Venom in Batman is a drug that enhances physical strength. This is also not what this was, but that's what it what it means to comics readers. Mm. So I think they were trying, but they did not succeed. I don't know. I literally thought like it was venom, like snake venom, and they were trying to... It very well could have been. They were trying, at least to what my perception was, make it seem as if it was such. Because I was confused thinking that... Poison Ivy was going to be, like, reptilian because of it. But then, obviously, she's supposed to be, like, plant. But anyways, so she's this nerdy girl who works in the lab, and her whole M.O. for being a scientist is she thinks that all humanity should die and that plants should take over. And she thinks this before she turns into one. Yes, she's an eco-terrorist who then becomes a plant eco-terrorist. And... Also, of course, because Hollywood has to go from all nerds have to be visually abhorrent and then they turn sexy. I mean, that is what happened to me. <laughs> Not true. Aww. You, you were never visually abhorrent. Oh, thanks, son. Um, <laughs> Not the direction I thought you were going with that. What? Okay, anyways, so... One, annoying. That's like a trope that I hate. Like, oh, the nerdy girl takes off her glasses and now she's beautiful. Can't we be beautiful as nerds? Anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> she gets this costume, which is very green. <laughs> and she has the fakest orange hair ever. It's not even orange. It's red. I don't know. The, I mean, this version And her of, nails... Yes. ...are, like, purple and super long. Although they change color. Everything changes yes. colors, too. Also, this is not helped by how insane the sets are for this version oh of Gotham. Oh, my. It's like laser tag. So, you go from being in an ice museum, or an ice sculpture museum, to the laboratory is like... If some hoarder house, glue in the dark, and... Yes, everything has glue lights. Was a laboratory. Was this made in the 90s? Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. And then... Oh, no, correction. It was made in 2000... 1997. 1997, okay, yes. Okay, yeah. The year we were born, mm -hmm. this came out. Then... This was our first movie. Um, no. Then, this... Actually, my first movie was Mission Impossible. I was a baby. That is significantly better. Mm -hmm. I don't obviously remember it, but... My first movie I really remember is Spirit. <clears throat> which was great. But no, my first movie was Mission Impossible, and my mom and another mom took their babies that were both under a year old to this movie and I just love that about my mom because it's so not my mom. Yeah. But she needed to see Mission Impossible because Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so you also get the introduction of Alicia Silverstone's Batgirl who is Alfred's niece? niece? With an American <laughs> accent? And 
an incredible computer hacking skills and also rides a motorcycle sometimes. And also has a weirdly physical relationship and interaction with him. Oh, okay. Well, when you say physical relationship, that implies something else. Well, you don't know what I mean. Well, yeah, not... I don't know. The way she... She is very affectionate... Yes. ...toward her uncle, who she rarely sees. Right, yeah. I don't know. Also, our friends seemed to be very bothered by the way she talked um, throughout this movie. I, I didn't think it was that bad, but she... Once again, I mean, I know, I know, I know, I know. But why does every single female in an action movie have to be so hypersexualized that they don't even really have a character? What are you talking about? There's nothing sexual about this movie. This whole movie is sexual. It is the horniest Batman ever. And it's horny in a terrible way. Like, okay... Also, so Poison Ivy has this power to breathe bad breath on people. It's pheromones. That's so dumb. <laughs> First of all, plants... I, I, okay, I'm not a botanist, but I'm pretty sure plants do not have pheromones. Then how do they get bees to land on them? Huh? Point. No. They, check. No. Mate. So... They reflect UV in neon purple, in, in a way that shows up neon purple to birds, hummingbirds, uh, insects, etc. It has nothing to do with pheromones. Do I think it's pheromones. Have pheromones. Anyways, of course, they had to do that because they're like, oh, pheromones, sexual. She's going to just like make all these men drop and fall in love with her and that's how she's going to get what she wants. Because, and this part is true, men are mindless sexual beings who... Speak for yourself. Well, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm saying all these tropes are so, so annoying. And if a woman just so much as strip teases in a gorilla costume, they're basically as good as mush. Um, I mean, it is. Have, did you see that gorilla costume? Yes, I did, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was racist. Yeah, they're weirdly. It, I, I couldn't have put a finger on why it was racist, but it really felt racist. That whole party, the the that yeah. So Batman. it's supposed to be a rainforest, save the rainforest party. That they put on as a fake to try to attract her to come to. So well, no, that... it's to attract uh, Mr. Freeze. Oh, my word. I forgot. He's totally, like, pointless uh, in this movie. But Am who else is going to steal the diamonds to try to freeze Gotham? Because diamonds are ice. They're reflective. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so they have this party as a trap. And... Batman, or Bruce Wayne, rather. Invites... Who's played by George Clooney in this. Yeah, so they got really attractive, high-line people for this. This is... To be a screw-up. I think this is right after he finished on ER, too. I don't know. But Uma Thurman, George Clooney, and, and this is what you got? Well, George Clooney is the second worst Batman cast. Didn't uh, our friends say that like he reimburses people? Yes, he <laughs> allegedly he will reimburse you if you told him you paid for a movie ticket to go see Batman and Robin. Okay, but let's look up 1997 movie theater. It's ticket. like two bucks, I'm yeah. sure, but still, it's hilarious. You also have Chris O'Donnell as Robin Dick Grayson, who is supposed to be somewhere between, like, 16 and 35. 32? Yeah. <laughs> and we were watching it with subtitles, and every time he calls him Dick, it's like 
they purposefully tried to make it seem like he was like using the word dick as an insult and excluded it from the subtitles so it made it seem even more like he was just using foul language rather than his name yes it was pretty hilarious four dollars and 59 cents was the average ticket. okay so that's what i a mean pack it's of gum worth, at a movie nowadays and this movie wasn't worth that so so i mean i was looking at the box office here so this movie cost what was it its estimated budget was 125 million dollars gross worldwide it made 238 so the kind of rule of thumb is double your budget and that's what you need to break even so technically this probably lost money mm -hmm. which is not surprising but it still made a lot more money than i would have suggest would have thought well, especially when the movie has a 3.8 rating on imdb so it's probably one of those movies that the only reason people kept going to go see it after the initial wave of people going to go see it it's because is it's because hilarious it was so bad and it had big name actors in it yes so Absolutely. at least they did i mean they did do a smart trip. Like, if this just had no-name actors and was this terrible, I don't think people would even still be watching it today. It's the fact that there there was such huge names in this and such a huge, you know, uh, Enterprise, Batman. Yes. Oh, yes. <sighs> this ruined Batman and the public consciousness until the Christopher Nolan movies. It, Which are my favorite. It killed one Batman movie. Shoemaker was going to make a third. And I believe also a Superman movie. Because they had that little faith in it. Hmm. Yes, it's rough. So, also... Also, the car. The Can car is the crazy. Batmobile? It's absolutely crazy. So, though, this is the Batmobile toy that I had at my grandparents growing up. Like, this car. I think that tracks for the time period. Yes, and so this is like what I thought the Batmobile looked like. It's also the Larry Mobile. Oh my word, it is. Mm hmm. For, from those of you who are ignorant and do not know, the Larry Mobile. Larry Boy! From Larry Boy, you just peek the mic. <laughs> in Veggie Tales. Oh my word, you're absolutely right. It's the Larry Mobile. It's the Larry Mobile. That is great. I never put that together before. <laughs> Yes, this is one of the worst Batmobiles, in my opinion. The best is, of course, Batman 87's Batmobile. That one's iconic. I know Becca doesn't agree, but she's wrong, and we all know that. So, <laughs> why aren't you speaking? What else <laughs> about I wanted, this movie? I figured you'd have rebuttal. I just rolled my eyes. That was enough rebuttal. Okay. So, after... The party and Uma Thurman and Arnold Schwarzenegger escape with a big ass diamond. And oh, <sighs> and Bane. Oh, and we also got to see the Batman credit card, which there's so many questions. <laughs> yeah, it's a like a bidding auction on women, which oh, just wait, let that sink wait, in. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, a bidding auction on women, but also we. Didn't finish our thoughts about oh. the rainforest party. I mean, oh, yeah. we, we said so this rainforest party. You keep getting party, distracted. I wonder why. A, there are dancers <laughs> dressed as indigenous people dancing in hideous ways. Okay, yeah, you're right. You know, when I Earth said earlier, I couldn't quite put my finger on why it was raised. <laughs> this is why it's raised. Yeah. And then gorillas come into the scene, which we all know the connection there. And it's terrible. No, and then Poison Ivy and comes then Poison in Ivy in a comes gorilla in costume. In a gorilla costume, surrounded by these still dancing indigenous people, and does a strip tease in the gorilla costume, out of the gorilla costume. It's great. It's terrible. It is. It's so bad. It's so bad. And so then Batman and Robin proceed to bid on Poison Ivy, which 
Dick but has she, no money. And she breathed her pheromones all yes. over him, and Dick is convinced, like, they're soulmates. Yes. But Batman whips out his Batman credit card, which was totally for uh, merchandise purposes. Like, I think there were commercials at the time oh, for Batman I'm, credit cards. I'm pretty sure that 99% of this movie was made, like our friend said, with toys in mind. Oh, it absolutely was. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's rough. So they escape. After that, they figure out Alfred's dying, is it? Yes. Of the same thing that Doc, that Mr. Freeze's wife is dying of. Oh, and by, his way, by the way, his wife is frozen. Yes. He's put her into cryogenic storage until he can fix the disease that she's sick with. And Poison Ivy doesn't like that and tries to kill her. There's another fight. And, I mean, basically, it's just fight scene after fight scene for the rest of the movie until you get to the end when Mr. Freeze tries to freeze Gotham and they stop them. It, both All Batman, Robin, and Batgirl. There's also a Batgirl versus Poison Ivy fight that you can tell they were really trying to say, like, yeah, girl power, and it did not come off that way. No. 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 You can't say, yeah, girl power, after you have done everything that you had done already to this point. And also, Mr. Freeze kind of comes and tries to freeze Gotham as like a side note. Like, you've forgotten about him at that point. And Pretty then much. you're like, what? <laughs> the city is frozen? All right. So, are you ready to talk about the most controversial part of this movie? What's the most controversial? The part? costumes. Oh, the bat nipples. The bat nipples and gratuitous butt shots. Okay, and they're like so horny butt shots. It's like, I mean, I don't know if it literally does this, but I'm just remembering them in my mind with like the sound effects of like, uh, like. <laughs> you, you're you just remembering that. That wasn't there. <laughs> well, there's, <laughs> there's sound effects of them putting on the costume. Oh, it's like zipper sound effects. Yeah. Like, so it isn't grunting. <laughs> I don't know. It very well easily could have been, and just but uh. <laughs> <Stop! laughs> <laughs> 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 okay. Anyways, um, and the infamous <laughs> bat nipples. Yeah. And, so on. Okay, so I will say, they have the bat nipples on Bruce and Dick, but not no, on... No, okay, but they do. Like, they're not as pronounced, but... No, they, they don't have defined nipples on Batgirl's costume, but somehow it's worse. Yeah, because it's it's it still comes to a point. Like, they're still pointy boobs but they're just not the nipple on them so it's just kind of like oh well we're not gonna do this but it's there but it's not there <laughs> and also here's her butt yep and <laughs> almost made my sound effect again there's also the crotch shots with the oh yes too. lots of crotch shots this <sighs> is just a wild movie nothing I mean, I kind of hope nothing like this will ever get made again, but never say never. <laughs> it's one of my favorite bad movies, just because it's so ridiculous. It's absolutely... So see, like, they're there. No, you're right. That's what I'm saying, is they're there. They're not as pronounced as the other ones, but, but they're there. The bat nipples are there on um, Batgirl. Ugh. If you have not watched this movie. But, like, see, the reason why for the, it doesn't look, like, as pronounced as the men's ones is the men's ones but literally like are, like, silver. like Clearly but, defined areolas. But, <laughs> look, so here's the three of them. In their arctic costumes. And theirs has nipples. Uh, if you have not watched this movie, do yourself a favor. <laughs> And, and at don't. Least, and at least watch like a highlights reel on YouTube or something. Because it is <laughs> hilarious. 
It's so bad. But honestly, it's... I mean, I have a great time just sitting back and making fun of it, so... I mean... Especially it, with it, a group of good friends. Funny. It's a lot of fun. Okay, quit looking up pictures <laughs> of bad nipples. It's hilarious. Stop. What? All right. Thank you for joining us on this surprise episode of the Marriage Stories podcast. Becca, were you surprised? Oh, I was so shocked. What would you give this movie out of ten? Ten. Yes! Until next time. Don't watch this movie.